just wanted you to see our town before I say anything your town your city your village the same as ours probably your beach looks just as peaceful but is it really Jesus left the temple and as the disciples were showing him the buildings and he said to them not even one stone will stay here on another all of them will be thrown down now this is no Jerusalem but to me I have a feeling and I said this before in um, some of the prophetic videos I made in 2019 and uh, since then I've made quite a few and every single thing I've said have come true a apart from a few things that still to come most of them have come true this is to me calm before storm I believe you also know it in your heart deep down in your heart know this is calm before storm storm is already happening in fact it's been happening for quite a while for more than two years now since the to be honest to be <laughs> exact since the beginning of the pandemic and it's been going on it's behind the scene this is a different war it's 21st century's war biological warfare um, weapons of mass destruction it's not directly involved but it's still involved you know the out for uh, countries that they won't tell you about they don't want us to know but in our spirit you and I know there are big things happening behind the scene and lots of big things are covered while they're shifting the focus on various various things some somewhat relevant and some totally irrelevant things so Jesus disciples came to him while he was sat on the Mount of Olives now this is no Mount of Olives either and they asked him tell us what are the signs of your coming back and the the, the end of the age and Jesus says to them see to it that you're not deceived for many false prophets will come claiming that they are Christ and he goes on he talks about this is you can read this in Matthew 24 I'm paraphrasing and he goes on and he tells you tells his disciples about the end time signs that you shouldn't be deceived by the false prophets that they come and claim even that they are Christ that wars and rumors of wars will break out and you hear of earthquakes and famines in various places all those things have already happened and I said that in my last video um, that all those things have already happened but if you read on even in Matthew 24 also stresses at the end it says in verse 9 says then they will deliver you 
over to be persecuted and killed and you will be hated by all nations because of my name. At that time, many will fall away and will betray and hate one another. And many false prophets will arise and mislead many. Because of the multiplication of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold. But that's already happened. But the one who perseveres to the end will be saved. And this gospel of kingdom will be preached in all the world as a testimony to all nations. And then the end will come. The gospel, I believe, has already been preached to the ends of the world. The earthquakes, famines... Wars and rumors of wars have already happened and we've heard of those uh, disasters already, whether man-made or naturally occurred. And the love of many have gone cold already because of the wickedness. You know, you don't believe that? Just look at people when you walk in the streets on the public transport, wherever you are, all they're doing, they are, even when they are with their family and friends, they're sat or standing or walking with their mobiles or cell phones, as Americans say it, and just gazing at that, scrolling down or up through the pictures, through the slides, through things taking selfies of themselves love of self has increased but love for others have gone cold to say the least and in many cases in many places have completely disappeared and that is the agenda of the powers to destroy love to destroy families why because Satan doesn't like love, doesn't have love. That's the only thing that Satan cannot and will not be able to mimic even, let alone produce. He can mimic anything else and copy anything that God and God's people do. You know, why do you think that even here in that same chapter, Jesus says, Many will come claiming that they are Christ. Many false prophets will rise. You know, to, and, and they deceive many. If they, think they can deceive many, how do they deceive? Only by miracles. Only by the things that they say and do. So they must be doing things that even some Christians will be deceived. It's not obvious. It's not something that you think, oh, well, I would know. In the natural, you wouldn't know. Because they all talk about Jesus. They all name the name of Jesus. And they claim by his name, they drive out demons. They raise the dead, even. But the Lord says, depart from me, you evildoers. On that day, on the judgment day, he will tell him, I never knew you. The same as Jesus, I want to tell you, see to it that you're not deceived. It's not the end yet. It's the beginning of the birth pain, as, as mentioned in that same chapter, Matthew 24. These are to happen. These things must happen. Wars, rumors of wars, famine and earthquake, that's already happened, that I just said. It's already happened and it is happening in various places. As I said, they could be naturally occurred uh, or they could be the acts of men as 
you and I might know. Uh, so, regardless of what it is and who's caused it, whether it's natural or man-made, those things are happening. But the end still to come. One thing, as I said in my previous video, one thing that we don't know when that will be fulfilled and um, when that is happening or that is fulfilled completely so the end might come is the number of people who will be persecuted and killed because of the testimony of Jesus, because of bearing the name of Jesus. And don't think for a second persecution of Christians is something that happens in the Far East or the Middle East. No. Persecution is right under our nose. Under your nose too. And it is in the West. You might not see it um, or feel it as you have been hearing about the persecution of Christians in other countries, but it is happening. It's more subtle and uh, I don't need to explain that. You know about all about it. People in various countries in America, we know lots of things have been banned. You can't say things even in the church or in the schools. Similar in Europe. And so the persecution is happening and if you say you're a Christian at work at your workplace you get some sort of discrimination it might not be direct but you will get that and that is why I keep stressing that you need to say that you need to stand your ground wherever you are stand on God's principles and do what the Lord commands you I don't know what God commands you. I know what God commands me. This is what I'm doing. God commands me to come here at, a, at the most inconvenient time and come up the hill, make this video and put it on the YouTube on the evils platform to reach the unreached. I do my part, I expect you to do yours. We all have to do our part. I've seen many people commenting on our videos that these things must happen, chaos must happen, all those things must happen before Jesus comes. So, so what is the conclusion? Are you trying to tell me that we should just fold our arms and do nothing, sit back, and just look at the world as it's heading towards total annihilation or do something about it. We just read, see to it that you're not deceived. And many false prophets will rise and mislead many. Because of the multiplication of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold, but the one who perseveres to the end will be saved. Now, I also said in my previous videos that once you're saved, you're saved. That's still true. Once you're saved, you're saved. But don't get me wrong. That doesn't mean, and I explained that in that video as well, that doesn't mean once you're baptized or you claim that you're Christian, that is it. You don't have to do anything about it. No, there is work to do. You, from that moment, you'll have a mission. You, if you don't know your mission, then you have to read the Bible, find out about the mission God has specifically for you. Although we all, as Christians, have a general mission to preach the gospel, to heal the sick, to deliver the oppressed. We all have to do that. And that is part of our uh, ministry's mission, mission statement. But apart from that, in our own 
personal or individual circles we have our own um, missions if you like that we have to do uh, to do that you have to seek the Lord seek his face repent first of all ask for the forgiveness of your sins and the sins of your forefathers your fathers and your forefathers uh, why do we do that because the Bible says that we have to do that because all the people that all the stories that we read in the Bible they've all done it all the prophets have done it so if we are following any of them then we have to do the same we have to follow suit there is a lot to say about that but I'm just going to suffice to this that there could be generational curses that can be passed down to you or your generation from your ancestors so at least for that reason you need to ask for, for, the, for the forgiveness of your father and your forefathers sins so you're completely cleansed and covered by the blood false prophets have risen and will rise but see to it that you're not deceived in order for you not to be deceived you have to have the discernment of the Lord discernment of the Spirit and that's again uh, something that the Bible teaches us that we have to ask for discernment the gift of discernment and the Lord will give us that gift to discern the spirits otherwise you will be following anyone anyone who talks about Jesus anyone who preaches the gospel or at least on the surface that looks like they are talking about the Bible and they are uh, backing their words uh, from the Bible then you believe them they must be doing those false prophets must be doing something amazing that can deceive people if they didn't do amazing things if they didn't show signs and wonders then people wouldn't be deceived at all but if the Bible says see that you're not deceived then they must be doing something amazing if they come and tell you your name if they come and tell you your history if they come and tell you uh, all sorts of things about your life but when you listen to their messages day in day out mostly they're talking about money me 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 money 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 I would take that with a pinch of salt I, I am nobody to condemn anybody I will never name anybody and shame anybody I will never do that because that is not for me to do that that is for the Lord to judge only God knows your heart only God knows people's hearts I, I am in no place and, and no one is in that place uh, to judge Jesus himself said uh, about the Pharisees and Sadducees he says to his disciples that they should listen to what the Pharisees what the um, teachers of the law say but don't do what they do that's a lot of statement there it says listen to what they're saying they're saying they're they're telling you the truth they're telling you from the Torah from the Word of God you need to listen to them but don't do what they do because they're hypocrites that's what he's essentially saying so that's what I'm saying to you don't be deceived because there is a rise of prophets the end is still to come and no one knows the date and the time and lots of people have tried to calculate it down to the hour and they all fail and they will fail because even Jesus says while he was on earth as the Son of God he said not even the Son knows that the time and hour 
Because why? I'll tell you why. Because it's down to us. Again, going back to why should we, you know, do anything. We should just sit back and watch what's happening. Because that can shorten the end time or our action could postpone the end time. Our actions or lack of it could delay or postpone or even bring it forward. Bring forward the end time. Now, we have to do our part and stand firm. And the fact is, the number of people who will be killed for bearing the name of Jesus, we will never know that. We will never know that. Uh, and only God knows that. And because of that, and because that depends on our actions, then even Jesus didn't know that then. That's why. So you know why. Let me just make a simple figurative example. Let's say the number of people who are to be killed are 500,000 people. And let's say 400,000 people have already been killed and we only need another 100,000. If we don't do anything, we're not even acting as a Christian to be persecuted, to be killed. But if we act, I'm not saying act and go put your head under the guillotine. I'm not doing, I'm not saying that. I'm not suggesting that. I'm just saying you have to do your part. God might protect you from the death altogether. You might not experience death at all. And you might be taken up by rapture. You might stay alive till that time. But you have to do your part. And so we don't know if those 100,000 people um, are going to be killed today, tomorrow, or the next day, or the next generation, next millennium. We don't know that. And that all depends on our whole collective action as, a, as the body of Christ action or the lack of it. I'm going to close this message. I want you to think about this, that these stones, although not uh, Jerusalem, these stones will not stay on one another uh, and all will be thrown down. This is the calm before storm. Now the storm uh, might not be what Hollywood depicted in many, many different versions of uh, their movies. Um, but, however, the end is at hand, as it's been for the last 2,000 years. It's right at hand. Um, this storm that I'm talking about is a storm of financial downturn, which has already hit. Um, and I said about that in my video on the, the title, What's Behind COVID-19. Uh, and then I explained that you need to be prepared and I say that again, you need to be prepared. How do you prepare? But there are quite a lot of things that you can do. Because that was another thing that a few people asked me, what can you do if things are going to hap they're gonna happen anyway? So what can we do? Well, first, first thing you have to do is cover yourself and your family daily by the blood of Christ. And that is your shield. That is the only shield you have, because this is a spiritual battle. Our enemy is not flesh and blood. 
We're not fighting against flesh and blood. We're fighting against the spiritual dark forces in heavenly realms. But we see the effects of them uh, in our earthly realm. And there are certain physical and earthly things that you can do. And they are, for example, uh, preparing and um, you know, having some stock um, for yourself because the famine that we said uh, happens in various places before the end time it is already happening the drought is happening in various places it is i believe they're mostly man-made manipulated by their systems by their machines however it is happening and uh, famine the same it's not it's 21st century is famine it's not like there is no wheat to buy anymore or there is no meat there are but they are too expensive and they will be even more expensive for for ordinary people to afford so that is a kind of famine that uh, we are in already so prepare yourself and do yourself and your family a favor Cover them with the blood of Jesus. Ask for the forgiveness of your sins and your father and your forefathers' sins. And cover your whole household with the blood of Jesus Christ. This is all spiritual. Remember, the Bible says we walk by faith, not by sight. And so we have to live by faith and we have to Act by faith, not by sight. I hope you enjoy your town, your beach, your village, your city, wherever you are. And I hope that you pray for your town too. I feel burdened for this country as we're going through another change of premiership. Uh, our prime minister in the UK is to be elected again. Uh, this is this is the fourth time since 2016 since people voted for Brexit um, and four times four times changing prime ministers uh, for a country in uh, six years it's, it's a it's a little bit um, over the top if nothing else um, and that is all because of all their evil if you like all the things all the corruption that they have behind the scene all the things that they're doing and they want to cover it up all the things that they don't want to do they didn't like brexit to begin with and they didn't want to do it so they were trying and finding their uh, various ways to bypass and have relations and some sort of deals with the EU, just the same as it was before, just name it Brexit. Uh, so we don't change our money, but we're still under the jurisdiction of the EU. We're still dictated by some unelected elite from there. And this is going to go on and they're still trying to find their own back alleys to the EU. So, you know, there's a lot to say about that. Um, just a day ago, one of, the, one of the candidates who wants to be the prime minister, if you don't, if you're not from this country, uh, Rishi Sunak said that uh, he was gagged uh, over the lockdown because he was against the lockdown and he was gagged. So if he says that, then how much more is going on behind the scene? So, you know, you just get the gist from there. And that is what the MSM says, hearing it from the horse's mouth. Anyway, uh, I would like to say a short prayer for you and your family. Uh, Heavenly Father, be with whoever, 
is watching this video, fill their house with your light, with your angels, wash them, cover them with, your, with the blood of Jesus Christ and listen to their cries, listen to their prayers. Fill their house with your love, with your joy, with your peace, the peace that surpasses all understanding, not the peace that comes from this world. Protect them from the evil, cover them with the blood of Jesus Christ, set a hedge of protection over them and theirs. And fill and anoint them with your Holy Spirit. Give them the gift of discerning the spirits and let them discern every spirit that is of you. And know if there is a spirit that is not of you or of the devil. Give them peace that surpasses all understanding and lead them in the path of righteousness. Meet all their needs and all the desires of their hearts in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I hope to see you again with another message soon. Till then, goodbye.